Hi, and welcome to The Coaching Experiment, a podcast that was born because someone planted a seed. A friend asked a simple question. In my world, that's what coaching is all about. It's about setting a space or creating a space which allows the coaches to inquire, to look deeper, to look further. I created this podcast because I wanted to give people who are looking for a coach or who are seeking to transform the opportunity to have a look or to experience what it might feel like to work with me. I do my best to ask questions. I dare to ask questions that are sometimes extremely direct and some people might not be comfortable being asked direct questions but this is my style if you're looking for a coach or you're simply looking to transform then may i invite you to have a look at this episode and all other episodes that i am going to create in the future So my guest today is Lucy Palmer. I have had a number of conversations with her, but I can't say I really, really know her that well. I, I can, but I kind of thought some I spent years with, you know. But I know that we are connected. And I think Lucy, ha- Lucy has a question for herself. And this conversation is an attempt to unravel or to explore it is what this question. So, hi Lucy, welcome. Thank you. And thank you for putting your hand up for this experiment, even though we're not, I'm not clear as to (laughs) the direction of it. That's the nature of experiments. (laughs) You don't know what they're for till you get to the end. Yes. So, in the beginning, I, I described it as showcasing your gifts and how you could ultimately use them to transition into coaching, right? And yeah. to, to get a clear picture of what it is that you do. Yeah. Okay. To be able to translate it into something more tangible, perhaps to use on your website. I don't know. We won't get into that. So my first question is, what do you hope to get out of this conversation? I would love to have a, a simple phrase that trips off my tongue that describes who I am and what I do. Because every time somebody says to me, um, literally those questions, I kind of go into a, uh, well, I'll do a bit of this and then I'll do a bit of that. And well, I used to do this and I used to that. And all the time inside of me, I'm feeling, shut up, Lucy, that's a ridiculous way of describing it. Um, people are always telling me that, you know, that they have lovely conversations, but, you know, I can, I can spill off all the things that other people say about me. Mm-hmm. And it's not that I, it's not that I don't think I have an amazing gift to share with the world. Mm-hmm. I know I have an amazing gift to share with the world. I just don't know how to label it or how to package it Mm. or whether I need to. And like the the feeling of the need to comes from having been on far too many courses that tell me how to package myself. Mm. And so some of the tension I feel when I'm talking about what I do is that there's like these other voices around me going, Oh, that wasn't a very neat elevator speech Mm. or like, you know, that took too many descriptions of whatever. Mm. I would just like to shut those voices up (laughs) and have something that is an authentic and my measure of authentic will be that I don't have to question it that I just know that what I've spoken is the truth for me and what others hear will always be up to them because I cannot 
control what they hear. Quite. So there are three ways. There are different ways in which way we can handle this, but I, I'm going to stick to the words that strike me, that jump out. And you said the need to. The need to be able to describe in three words who it is, what it is I do. Now, I can assure you, I can guarantee that if there were people in this room who were coaches, they would put up their hand and say, do you know what you do? Uh, mm, mm. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. They'd all trip up. I tripped mm-hmm. up myself. So what I wa- I, my next question is, why do you need to do that? What will it give your sense how will it make you feel better about yourself? I don't actually think it will necessarily make me feel better about myself. I think what drives all of this is the feeling, the feeling that I, that I have found a place of peace in my life and that it's, I want to share that with people. I, I, I love talking to people and I love when they get this moment where they just go, where they just see something different because of a story that I've told or a metaphor or, you know, and I don't have any of these things stored up in my head. I just respond to what shows up in front of me and just like you are, ask questions that feel, feel natural. However, when it comes to like putting yourself out there in the world there is so many beliefs and things about the way to do that and yet there's some practical stuff you know how does anybody get to know of anybody how did we meet we met through a group on facebook or like read a post and thought oh that's curious but we had to we had to have a point at which we met in order for there to be a next state so there has to be a point at which you connect or you get interested and like in today's world where you know i'm almost like describing dating it's like you know in today's world it's like show a picture go like that one don't like that one and the picture is it in facebook land it might be more about or oh, they made me laugh or they sounded interesting or they know something that i would like to know but there's a something that causes one person to get interested in another person and the vehicle for that mm-hmm. there's many vehicles mm-hmm. and i guess part of my exploring is which kind of vehicles do i want to be on Okay, um, so yeah. So ultimately, what are you seeking? Are you seeking to connect or to create clients? It's a very interesting question because my automatic answer is to connect, and then what comes up next immediately behind that is I. I want to connect with everybody, but I I only want to be in relationship, which is what I call clients. Being in relationship with somebody, if if that feels good for them, feels good for me. But of course, you don't know that at the moment that you connect. Mm. So, you want to be in connection. You want to be in relationship, and the relationship could translate, if I hear heard that properly, to being a client that works for both yeah okay so would you say would you call yourself a spiritual coach (laughs) i don't think i would call myself a spiritual coach but i i I am (laughs) i probably am (laughs) I think what I work with um, is more than what just appears in front of me. I do trust my intuition. I, I, I suddenly get insights into things and I don't know where they came from and I can only call that spiritual. And um, 
I find the non, the, the bits that don't get said and the bits that don't get seen are just as interesting, if not more interesting to me than what shows up. Because what shows up is a result of those things. So I'd rather go back a stage. Okay. Go... So I'm going to interrupt, not because I'm being impolite, okay? No, because I'll waffle otherwise. Feel free. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So, um, okay. I think I'm hearing something you're not saying. Mm -hmm. And that is because ultimately I can go out on the great China wall and say, this is what I do. This is how I will help you. This is what insights you will get. But ultimately, what a client or what a human being, let's, let's call it a human being, because in the spiritual world, I have noticed that spiritual people who, spiritual coaches and people who are trying to point their clients, their friends, their connections to this unseen thing are having difficulty with putting money on that. I don't have a difficulty with putting money on it. Okay, okay. That's good. The, the other thing is that what we don't see as coaches, okay, and which I've seen recently, is that a client or a, a someone would be willing to create a relationship with me and to connect with me for one reason only. I have a solution to their pain. I have a solution to what it is that seems to be blocking them from growing or, or stopping them from getting where they want to be. Um, now, people are looking for solutions. And that's why ultimately people will connect. I connected with you for different reasons. I wasn't looking to become your client and you were looking, weren't looking to become mine. So that's, that's, the, that's the, the contrast that I'm, like, I'm trying to draw. Your need to describe what you do as opposed to the solutions that you offer. I find it interesting because if the reason for connection starts as being about being a client then it makes sense what you said that it's about a solution and that they're looking for a solution but I don't actually very often start conversations from that place I think I, I yes I see where you're coming from we, we connect because we find each other interesting and then ultimately mm -hmm. yes and ultimately coaching is about building relationships that, yes, but for to actually create clients and to be able to understand, to it's what I'm saying is it's not much. It's not so much about what we do. It's more about the road that we take. The nav. Let me see. So. You show up on Facebook, you put up posts, you talk about what you, what, what, what means, you talk, you talk about your stories, about your personal experience, about, about stuff that has meaning to you, about what you've seen, about your life. And someone sees you and they like your post and you start a conversation. So, and the, the, the picture behind the, the per there's a person behind the picture, okay? So we're connecting all the time. We're connecting, we're connecting. But I think a human being, apart from this, we won't create clients if there's no connection. Agreed. We just can't. Ultimately, the road to creating clients is walking this road as well as offering a solution. And that is what people want to know rather yeah. than what you do. Yeah. And that's where I get, that's, you know, I can see, I can see where I get stuck because I don't see myself as being a solution giver. 
and so therefore I find it difficult to advertise myself as a solution giver or, or to either narrow what kind of solution that might be and so whenever you're talking about businesses you talk about niches what kind of you know what kind of problem will someone want a solution to and I and that's where I get caught up because that's not where I start mm. so I um I absolutely help people create solutions absolutely mm -hmm. that's not, that's you're, not breaking, where you're breaking up now sorry you are breaking up I lost you okay so I I absolutely mm -hmm. help people find solutions mm -hmm. but I don't start from there I don't turn up in the conversation or put myself on Facebook or write an article from the point of view of I've got an answer to your problem okay so what I'm hearing here is that you can't promise any results because the person no. exactly no, no? And, and, and so what fascinates me is, again, different perspectives of like, that's what you've heard and that's not what I meant. So um, I, th I think there's something really important in, in this because I think that's where I, where I have an issue, if you like, with the general process of how you develop a business. Mm -hmm. Because it's always about, or it seems to me as if the way that marketing and things are about is about finding who's got the problem that you've got the solution to now fundamentally i don't believe that a human being needs fixing or needs sorting hmm. that doesn't mean that they don't have situations in their lives that would be easier if they had a different understanding or would be more enjoyable if they weren't angry or are fe feeling like they've got big decisions to make and they've got no idea why they're feeling so resistant to making the decision. Okay, I'm, I'm going to stop you because th th I think this is, this is a wonderful example of how we as spiritual coaches, okay, or whatever, see this, that nobody needs fixing, the world doesn't need fixing, and everybody in, in his or her essence is okay, okay? However, and some people also in this, in our line of work, have a problem with marketing, have resistance towards marketing. Now, firstly, I cannot guarantee a solution or results for anyone. I can't. Okay, what I can do is point out how my life has changed because of an understanding that I came across. Um, what I can do, because let's face it, nobody needs fixing. What we can all do with having a, a more peaceful mind understanding where our experience of life comes from and we were talking before we started recording you also mentioned that you have been to courses hmm. you, to better yourself or to learn a skill have you have been to a coach who has not necessarily given you a solution but has somehow impacted your life yes and that's, and that's really interesting because I'm realizing that I am getting very caught up in a belief that nobody's got a problem. And that is getting in my way of describing that I have a solution. Because if I don't think anyone's got a problem, then I can't have a solution. But actually, in the, in, like in the whole way that we interact as human beings, if there isn't a reason to interact, you, you don't. Um, there's always a, a reason, and that reason isn't necessarily 
about oh i think i want to work with you it it, it can be anything it can but we're attracted maybe attracted is a more interesting word we're kind of drawn to somebody not for their physicality or because we think they're an answer to our problem but because there's something that just i don't know what it is but but there is a something so there's um i think i know what you're pointing at i'll i'll give you a simple example i received a letter a week ago from a friend of mine, a Dutch friend, who was my pro bono client, okay? A week ago, she sent me a letter thanking me because of, because I did identify a problem. I don't have a niche, but I identified a problem, the permission to be you. Mm. Now, can you call that niching? Perhaps. Is it a big umbrella? Yes, okay? But because of the fact that I come out like that so strongly, I come out and talk about it practically very often, this woman started to question. She started to question herself and where she's at with giving herself permission to be who she is completely. And as a result, I, I never gained her as a client. She's my friend and will remain my friend, hopefully. She sent me a beautiful letter when I was reading it, I was crying. Just because I identified this issue, which is largely in myself because I have, still have problems in giving myself permission to be me. And the thing I need to teach most is that. So of course, there are problems in the world. There's, there is, the world doesn't need fixing and it's, it's, Th that's true, but that's very abstract. And people uh, need tangible ways of moving forward without thinking of the abstract. Because if you think of COVID-19, mm. for example, and the way some people are holding on to truths and some other people are holding to other truths, that is causing discord. And it's coming from a place of fear. Mm. So the that we there are problems and i'm yeah there are and you've really really made me recognize something um because one of the patterns of things that have happened in my life is that i from an early child listened to the minister the teacher the adults and thought they all knew more than i did and if they were saying that this is the way you do it then that's that's what you do and some of that I followed quite blindly and this morning I was writing an article about um, how I how I'm used to following rules and conditions mm. and so if somebody said, so if I accept that there are no problems that nobody's broken then there cannot be a need for a solution that in effect is a, a rule that I've set myself. Mm. And by setting that, I have then removed any avenue for describing myself in solution terms. Yes. So that is incredibly unhelpful if you are then trying to describe the value that you add. So, you know, so for me, that's really beautiful to understand that actually that, that is a, like, um, a, a, a rule a belief a, a thing where i've linked two things together mm. you know if people are not broken they don't need solutions well that that is not true mm. what is true is that i am not broken and i struggle with the idea of rules and trying to keep the right side of them yes so that i don't see that as a problem which is back to me like defining what i mean by problem but would it be really useful if I stopped doing that? Yes. <laughs> um, and I think that I've found ways through doing that. And then little things like this come up. And you think, oh, I've done it again. Yes. I've linked two Rinse things. Rinse and together. repeat. Yeah. And, and so what I do for others, as you have just done for me, is that I spot where they're linking two things together that don't actually link. I spot where they're holding themselves to something 
that doesn't need to be held to. Um, and that is very freeing for people because once you unhook those two things, okay. they are both free to roam. And they are both free to be whatever you make of them. So can I make a distinction now? So it's not necessarily, okay, and about the value that you add to others and describing that. Mm. It's about finding your own pain point, what you do, how you created rules for yourself, how you came out of that, mm. seeing who relates to it in your audience, mm and telling them how you solved it and thereby creating connection relationships and perhaps ultimately a client. And that is true if I'm in an environment where um, probably I'm looking for a coaching client that comes about through story sharing and Facebook and those kind of things. And I guess because there's two parts to my business, there's um, the kind of clients that I'll attract through Facebook and then there's my corporate clients. Yes. So if I look at the corporate client that I have at the moment without giving away any... Um, That's another kettle of fish. Well, it is and it isn't. Because the reason I got to know um, this person to start with is because a friend of mine had a contract with the company that she works for. And this friend wasn't available on the day that they needed a facilitator. Mm. So... They rang me, I stopped in, yeah. I did a day's facilitation. The conversations I had during that day, this person was like, oh, you, you've seen something in what we're doing here that nobody else has ever seen. And we're working together now in a way that we, you know, we weren't even talking before the day and now we're actually putting a presentation together. Mm -hmm. Can I have you on tap? Can I ring you whenever I want to ring you? And I'm like, well, you could, but what, what would probably be of more value is if we actually put this into a, a context where we're working together and I'm working as your coach to help you see through whatever it is that you want to see through to keep building the relationships that you've been finding difficult. And is there some form of solution there? <sighs> Well, I wouldn't know until there was... You mean, did I come up with a solution? I came up with loads of solutions. Yeah, but what I heard from this lady or from this person who said, hmm, you have seen something that we've never seen before. You've pointed us to something different, which makes leads me to conclude or assume, okay, that they had an issue, they have a problem, they have something that they're grappling with and you saw it differently which could mean you're offering a solution i think you have a resistance to the word solution i really do <laughs> um and that in itself is interesting and i think the reason i resist the word solution is there's several things come up in my mind one is i am not responsible for the outcome of the solution they are so it, I don't so, make So what? Well, they, they, therefore I don't solve, they do. Yeah, yeah but your issue is, is semantics. Yes, and that's because I'm rule driven. Exactly. I'm so if you, if, if, if you could make peace with this part, mm. you know, I, I had a client too. She used to say, I used to say to her, okay, I'm not the catalyst of your change. I point you to it. Yeah. That's it. You yeah. see it, you solve it. You yeah. see? And she kept coming back to me and saying, no, it's not true. You, boy, you did it. No, I didn't. I know that. But then I realized that it was a game I was playing in my head. Yeah. What if you are offering a solution? So what? What is the big <laughs> deal? You know what I mean? I do. You and that is even though you know it's not true. Sorry, I interrupted you. <laughs> but that's... that's that's where I get stuck in the trying to describe it because I can't, I can't, um, 
and it is an I can't because it feels rigid. It feel it feels like an immovable thing inside of me. Now logically, I can hear you, and I know that what you're saying makes absolute sense. But there's a rigidity inside me right now, okay. which is an attention. And I know this feeling, and I know that this is when I'm up against a rule that I've made that I haven't actually quite figured out what it is yet. Okay, and we don't even have to figure that out. Hmm. So what about if we use different language? I'll point you to a solution. I'll point you to resolving the issue, but I, won't, I can't solve it for you. I won't be the one that solves it. I'll point you to it. That's re the word resolving, I immediately, my whole body relaxed. Yeah. I'm happy to resolve. I am not happy to solve. I don't know why that's so different. <laughs> yeah, semantics, baby. <laughs> so what did I do with you just now? I didn't do it. I, I'm not solving your issue. Mm. I mean, I'm pointing, asking questions and hearing what you're not hearing yourself. I am listening to what you don't say. Yes. And this is probably what you offer. Yes. And I have described that to people, but it sounds, I've described that to people and with people who have a marketing hat on have said, but that's not tangible enough, but that is what I do. <laughs> So what they say is like you can't, you know, people don't come, don't aren't looking on their shopping list for, oh, I need to resolve my stuck issues today. People don't don't do that. They do, um, as this particular client did, my team, I, they just don't talk to me and it's ridiculous and I'm fed up with them. Communication. Yeah. But they would be looking, if they were Googling, they would be looking for conflict resolution or um, dysfunctional relationships within a team. So what's the problem? The problem is communication or the lack, the, the, the lack of communication. In that particular scenario, it's, it's broad, it's broad it's, it, it's, it was huge. It, it, because a part of, there was like what the team is actually doing and then there was the part that she was playing from her belief systems about how teams should work. So it, it, it was multi-layered and very complex. See, so look, how many problems are there there? Loads. <laughs> yeah. So you, when I said, when we, I talked about, I talking about your rule, identifying yeah. the pain, the emotion that you had to it, yeah. And how you saw it, describing it on Facebook, then you switch, then you switch to your, your corporate. And I kind of said it's a different kettle of fish. And then actual fact, you said, no, not so different. Because we're dealing with human beings with the same yeah. basic challenges. Yeah. Okay? So this is why it's not important to describe what we do. It's important to describe, to, to come into contact with our own pains, our own uh, challenges, uh, the things that we've worked through mm. and found and resolved. Be and because you have, you mm. have to be, all we have to be is a step ahead of our clients or two, three steps ahead and being walked where they are walking and where we've already navigated where we've come out and seen now in this process right now you have realized that you um are stuck with the world solution that nobody's fixed everybody nobody needs fixing everybody's okay and these are blocking you from thinking that there are problems in the world Mm. But when we identify problems, then we know they can be resolved. And they can be resolved by making our audience and our stories relatable. I hear you. I see you. I can help you. I can't promise any results or solutions. Mm. I can point you. Mm. You see what I'm getting at? Yeah, I can. And it's really interesting because when I just quickly was running through my head of... Um, Objections. No, 
Yeah, but typical people that I that typical conversations that I have with people. Mm -hmm. Pretty much all of them come down to the relationship they have with another. Mm. So the relationship with a colleague, the relationship with the rules, the relationship with the virus, mm -hmm. the, the the feeling that they are in conflict with something or not even conflict just out of sync with something that it doesn't just fit nicely it doesn't work how it should the relationship isn't how the perfect partnership should be um but most of most of the conversations i have are about about that aspect of people how would you um, label that problem It's well. It's I, I don't know that I can label it. I can I can think of different roots that that cause that to happen. Why are the, why are the relationships getting stuck? They One word. One word. Misunderstanding. See, um, you are extremely intelligent. So that intelligence leads to analysis. Mm -hmm. And what we're looking to identify here is I want to help. I want to help people. I have yeah. something, I have this gift, I have this power of analysis, I have this power of stepping back, I have this power of resolving things. Because, mm. I mean, this woman said to you in the, in the, in the corporate mm. company, oh, you've seen something that nobody's mm. ever pointed us to. You have this power, okay? Mm. You are mm. getting lost mostly in semantics. Yes. In, yeah. And all you need to identify is one word. What is the problem? If, of all the conversations that you've had, now, what, from what I see is you love building relationships mm. and you love connecting. Mm. And I'm sure of all the conversations that you've had without talking about them now, you can identify one, either one common factor or that people were having issues with. Mm. And you, with all the experience you have in corporate, okay, with your married life, mm. with all you went through, you have a toolkit yes yeah and you can use it in different ways but the thing is this is why i'm insisting i'm sorry i'm being a broken record okay <laughs> i've been on this path i've been on five years and i've been trying to okay i can offer you this i have this why don't you listen because i'm not telling them listen i can help you i'm not telling them i can help you point you to a resolution okay please note my choice of words okay but now I'm identifying, right, um, permission to be you. What problems could people be encountering where I can help, where I can be of service? What were my issues? Boundaries would be for one. I made market research, okay? And you will see that people have issues and problems. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And all we have to do is identify what they are, see, and if they relate to me, put it in a package, and this is something I'm willing to do with you, okay? Even on another call, it's fine. Um, where, and for you, it's rules, the word solution, the people. Yeah. How did you get out of that? And people will relate, it, and the post will speak to one individual. Because I, I think that um, it is very much that when I look like at the common thread is that, that people are thinking there's a right way to do this. And if it's not working, therefore they must be doing something wrong or somebody else must be wrong. But actually, if there's no right, wrong, and there's just different versions, yeah. 
then the tension comes out of it and you can start looking for, well, okay, so what else could they be showing up here? How else could we be seeing this? How might they be actually, what might they have meant? If they didn't mean what you think they meant, what else might they have meant? Okay. Is there another way of seeing that situation? And this that- is your zone of genius. Yeah. This is yeah. your zone of genius. Yes, I think you might be right. <laughs> oh, but you can't be right because there's no right, there's no wrong. <laughs> I think you have a point of view. <laughs> no, no, but I feel the truth in that is what, it, and that's different to right and wrong. Yeah, I feel the truth with you. Then, if it hits a point, it's not about me being right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. about me pointing to to a possibility. Yeah, yeah. because that that is what I'm constant and, and I do do that because I have realized how often I've been up hurt, upset, hurt, rejected because I believe that somebody has said I'm not good enough or I've, I've said I'm not good enough against an expectation or a rule that's been made up. And so that, that's, that's how I got out of it is to, and I'm not completely out of it because I'm still falling into the trap. Rinse and repeat, darling. Rinse yeah. and repeat. Okay, I um, I think we've reached a climax. I think we've reached a a, a good point. Yeah. yeah, very very useful. Okay, so shall we? Uh, have you got enough with this? Shall we end it here? I have got enough. I I've got I've got plenty of. Um, plenty of feeling freer to think differently, which is also what I do. Is I free up the things that are stopping people from being able to see the other possibilities and perspectives, and that's what you've just done for me. So thank you. You're welcome. Thank you for being a guinea pig. Mm, it's been fun. Thank you. What was your experience of this conversation? Was it difficult? Was it easy? Did you resonate with anything that was said? Or maybe we even had an insight. If you're up for a challenge and you are ready to play, if you are curious about what a conversation can do for you, then go to my website, butv.com and send me an email Let's have a conversation. I look forward to meeting you. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.